What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to handle joystick or controller input in Pi games so let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn today how to handle controller input in Pi game and I think most of you guys watching this video will have Pi game installed already. However, if you don't have Pi game installed, you need to open up your command line and you need to type pip install Pi game for this video. And then you can just use it by saying import Pi game. And the first line of code that we're going to write besides the import statement in this file is we're going to say Pi game dot joystick dot init which is going to allow us to use joysticks uh, in the first place this is going to recognize the joysticks and then what we can do is we can get a list of the joysticks that are available so if you have multiple joysticks or controllers or game pads plugged into your computer it's going to recognize all of them and you can select one uh, to focus on to to get the input from and in order to get that list what we're going to do is we're going to say joysticks so joysticks is going to be the variable name and then we're going to have a list comprehension it's going to say pi game dot joystick dot joystick with a capital j so we're going to create the joystick object based on a number this number is going to be x and the x is going to be 4x in range pi game dot joystick dot get count so the idea is we get the number of joysticks available uh, we iterate over all the numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, indices of the individual joysticks, and we create joystick objects based on those indices. And then we get a list of joystick objects. And in this case, we can just say print joysticks, and you can see in my case, I only have one simple joystick object, which is this Super Nintendo-like controller. So this is a very simple gamepad that I'm going to use here, but you can use also a PS4-like controller, an Xbox controller, doesn't really matter. Use whatever you want, joystick, controller, gamepad, whatever. Uh, it's going to be recognized by Pi Game, and then you can use it uh, by selecting it. In this case, quite simple because I only have one. Uh, but before we go deeper into the joystick, we're gonna craft, uh, we're gonna code the actual game, which is not gonna be a fancy game. It's just gonna be a uh, white rectangle uh, or a white square on a black background that we can move around and we can change its color. So it's just going to be something that we can interact with. But of course, what we're talking about in today's video can be applied to Tetris, to Snake, uh, to any, to Flappy Bird, to Pong, if you want to have multiple controllers, doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to focus today on handling the input from the controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to create here a simple class that we're going to call player. And this player class is gonna inherit from object. And we're gonna say then it's gonna have a constructor. And this constructor is just gonna do the following. It's gonna say self.player is gonna be a pygame rectangle. So pygame.rect.rect with a capital R. And it's gonna have the position, I think, 300, 400. And it's gonna have a height and a width of 50. So not really big. That is that. And then we're also going to say self.color is going to be the string white by default. So we're going to have a white rectangle by default and we can change the color later on. Um, then we're going to say move is going to be a function. And what move is going to do is it's just going to say self.player.move um, underscore IP. And we're going to pass here an X speed and a y speed and this x speed and y speed is going to be passed here to move as a parameter. So x speed y speed is going to be passed to the move function of the player object and then the player is going to move uh, based on this tuple of x speed and y speed. And then we're going to have two more functions. The one is going to be the change color function, uh, which is going to be the color passed here and we're going to say self dot color equals color. And the actual draw function is going to be also quite simple. It's going to take the game screen as an argument and we're going to say pi game dot draw dot rectangle uh, onto the game screen with the color that we have here. We're going to uh, draw the player object that we have here. So we're, we're going to draw this rectangle here with this color here on the game screen, uh, game screen that is passed to the player object that we're going to have then. So then we're going to say pygame.init, the classic pygame init. We're going to create a player 
and we're gonna say um, we want to have a clock. The clock is going to be a pi game time clock. And the screen is going to be a simple pi game dot display uh, dot set mode. And we're going to make an 800 times 600 screen. That is that. And now we get into the game loop. So here we're going to handle the actual input. We're going to say while true this is an endless loop. Now all of this here that you see, except for the first lines are basic Pi game stuff, right? So if you've never worked with Pi game, maybe you should not jump right into handling controller input, you should maybe look into the basics of Pi game. Um, but all this here, so all up and like all this part here is actually just basic Pi game code. This is why I'm not explaining too much. Uh, because that is not joystick or controller specific. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. We're going to say for event in pygame dot event dot get for events that we have here. We're going to check if the event type first of all is pygame dot quit. If yes, we're just going to break out of the loop. Otherwise, if the event type is equal to pi game dot joy button down. So notice we have joy button down, we have joy axis motion and we have uh, joy button up. So joy button down being when the button is pressed joy button up being when it's released, we're going to go with joy button down. What we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, if we have this event, we're going to check what kind of event we have. And how do we do that? We do that by first of all, let's print uh, the the pi game dot joystick dot joystick uh, with a capital J in my case, since I only have one joystick plugged into the computer, I'm going to go with zero. In your case, uh, if you have multiple, you would pick the one that you want to use here from the joysticks list. And this is going to be your joystick object. But I'm going to get this joystick zero and I'm going to say get button. And I'm going to say, um, actually, how do I do that? Uh, can I get somehow the printed? Maybe maybe we want to print the event first to see what kind of buttons they are there are in the first place, right? So right now I'm not pressing anything. So this is the gamepad here. And now if I press something, you can see that we have events happening. So when I press buttons, you can see here, I get the button that is pressed. So I have x a b y, but here we have two, three and so on. So x, let's let's scroll down. x seems to be now nothing is happening. Let me run this again. So if I press X, I get joy button down button zero. If I press a, uh, of course, I need to do this inside of the Pi game window, a b y, I get one, two, three. So x is zero, a is uh, one, uh, b is two and y is three. And since I know that right now, what I can do is I can say, okay, if the button that is pressed uh, is the respective button then do something. So what I can do is I can say if pi game dot joystick dot joystick zero get button and then zero. This basically means if the button zero is pressed, then do this. Um, and if that is the case, what we're going to do is we're going to say player dot change color and we're going to just take the color of the button. So X is blue in this case. Um, a is red, B is yellow, and Y is green on the Super Nintendo controller. Um, and this is why I'm going to do it like that. So I'm going to say change color to blue. And then we're going to copy this. We're actually going to say elif. And the rest is actually the same. So I should be able to copy this here. There you go. We're going to change this to one and one is a so this is going to be red. Now I can copy this here, I can paste this twice, I can change this to two, and to three, and then I can change this to yellow, and to green. And the next time what this means is now, when I press one of those buttons, we're going to get into this action, we're going to call the change color, this is going to change the color of the object. And the next time we draw it, we're going to have a different color. So right now, if I run this here, and uh, now for some reason, I don't have did I mess up something? Where is the rectangle? Oh, we forgot the basic game loop, right? So this is the handling of the input. But we also need, of course, to say, um, we also need, of course, to say screen dot fill. 
we're gonna pass a triple of zero 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 RGB for blue uh, for for black, then player dot draw with each iteration, and then pi game dot display dot update, and then clock dot tick and let's go with one hundred and eighty. So game screen is missing. Oh, I need to pass the screen here. There you go. So now we have this rectangle here, this, this square. And now if I press B, it becomes yellow. If I press uh, A, it becomes red. If I press Y, it becomes green. And if I pl uh, press X, it's going to become blue. So this works. And now let's talk about the movement because that's quite simple. The movement works differently because let's again say print event to see what happens when I press uh, one of the movement buttons here. It doesn't really do much, right? So if I press another button, you can see I get the button events, the joy button down. But if I press this here, it doesn't do anything, right? This is because that is a different event. This is the uh, the actual, uh, this is actually the Pi game, what was it? Joy axis motion event. However, we're not going to use this because we're going to do it differently with each iteration. What we're going to do is we're going to determine the X speed and the Y speed based on whether these buttons are pressed or not. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say the X speed of our character is going to be round. So we're going to round whatever we get as a result here. Pi game dot joystick dot joystick zero, get axis. And now this is something that you need to figure out. I'm going to show you how you can figure that out in a second. Uh, you get the axis zero, this is the x axis and the axis four is actually the y axis. So if I change this now here to y and to four, uh, this will give us the x speed and the y speed. And then we can just say player move x speed and y speed. And then I can run this. And now if I use these buttons, I move around the square and then I can use these buttons here to change the color and these here to move around, right? So this works. And um, how do we know that this is axis zero and axis four, we can essentially do that by checking the event by saying if event dot type is equal to pi game, joy, axis motion, we can just print the event. And we can realize that when I press the individual keys here, uh, when I press right or left, um, you can see the values and you can see the axes that are actually used. Now, uh, there is a little bit of confusion here because you have one, two, three as well, which are not really important. But uh, if you if you play around a little bit, you can see when I go up and down, it's axis four. Uh, and when I go left, right, it's zero, one, two, and three for some reason, but zero is enough. So uh, zero is either one, if I go to, um, to the right, I think, and negative one, if I go to the left, I think that should be it. Uh, but yeah, this is how you do that. So with each iteration, we ask whether the axis is pressed or not, what the value at the axis is, then we round that value, this is then the speed. So either one or negative one, uh, since this is just pressed or not pressed this is not an analog uh, controller here. But yeah, this is how you do that. And maybe one last thing we want to do is we want to say elif pi game dot joystick joystick zero get button. And I look this up, I think the select button is button eight. On my controller, I'm going to change this back to white. So again, you can just print the event to get the button number. But if I change this now, and I press the select button, or was it the select button? No, select. Oh, this was actually the start button. There you go. Select turns this to white, because that's button eight, as you can see here. So this is how you process the joystick or controller input in Pi game. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.